Okay, the final video in my rack and pinion series here will be printing out all the parts here and then assembling them and seeing if everything works out perfectly. If our clearances are correct and we can actually get this to perform as it does here with our joints. So we're going to go ahead and send this to our printers and I'll show you in this video how I'm going to lay out each part and how I'm going to slice it. And as you can see here, I went ahead and modified the colors just to give it the colors I'm actually going to be using when I print this or the filaments I'll be using. All right, let's begin. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'm going to send the base to the bamboo. In order to do that, I'm going to untoggle the visibility of the spur gear and the rack. And uh, if you recall, the base is made up of two bodies. I've got the actual base part and the pin. Okay, we're going to right click up here on the top of our browser and we're going to go to save as mesh. And over here in my dialog box, I've got sent to 3D print utility and I have my bamboo slicer as my slicer of choice that this will default to. I'll click OK. All right, and this is brought into the bamboo slicer. Let me open that up. And a few things I'll show you here. This is brought in. It comes in together as one unit, even though there's two separate bodies there. What I'm going to do is click up here to split to objects. And then I'm going to go over here where it says process. I'm going to go from global to objects. And you can see here I have my both parts here. I'll click on a black area here to deselect them both. And now I can click here and just drag these out. And I've got two separate bodies here that I can move individually. All right. so. Next part is figuring out what's the best print orientation for this. Now Bamboo Studio does have a very good auto orient option here. So if I click on the base here and click on auto, it'll actually orient it to what it believes is the best orientation to 3D print this. And this, I think I will go with that orientation. Actually, it's what I was thinking. The other option would be to print it in this orientation here. Um, which is fine, but it would take longer and you've got uh, less of a surface area. You know, ideally, I would love to print this on this surface here because that would give me the perfect hole, but that's not going to work because it would require supports on the underside and also supports over here. So I'm going to have to make a compromise here and the best orientation is going to be in this orientation here. All right, and then the pin, uh, that's fine the way that's orientated. That's exactly how I want it. All right, I can click on auto arrange to have it arrange um, everything as the way I like it. Um, oh, let me show you something here, actually, and I kind of have the setting already done, but let's go back. I'll undo it and then show you it. I'm going to go back to global here and within others. Well, default, it's by layer. So let me just go back to that uh, and go ahead and arrange this again. So if I slice this and I print it by layer, what it does is if I bring down the simulation here, right, it's going to print one layer of each going back and forth until it finishes the pin and then it'll finish printing the rest of the base. But I often like to take advantage of the print by object. So within the others tab, you go down to special mode and you can change the print sequence to be by object instead of by layer. And when you do that, if you haven't arranged your part correctly, it's going to give you an error that says they're too close together. And that would be a problem because it would knock one over if, while printing the other because it completes one and then goes to the other. So what we can do is we'll go back to prepare and you can see here that you get these outlines around the part telling you how far apart they need to be in order for this to work. You can also use the auto arrange tool here and it'll automatically arrange them where it believes um, works. But all you have to really worry about is that when you do move these around that these um, circles here um, don't overlap. In this case, interesting, it does the auto arrange and it's overlapping them. But let's see what happens if I slice the plate. It allows you to slice it which is interesting. I would have thought, honestly, I would have needed something like, like this for that to work. So it's interesting that it allows it to go here, even though the circles overlap. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or not. I don't feel like testing that right now. So I'm just, I'm just going to do this and I'll come back and maybe do a separate video uh, where I test this. But here I know clearly these circles 
will not overlap and it'll be fine. So now when I slice this, you know, I can take the slider up and down and you can see it's going to do the pin first. And once it completes that, it's going to go and do uh, the base over there. So this looks good. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to go with default settings. I'm going at 0.2 millimeter layer height resolution. This is going to be white. So let's go back to prepare. And I'm just going to select on the object and click uh, number two here for both of them. I'm just typing number two because that's the... Oh, okay. It's got it as ABS. That's not what I have on my filament um, AMS unit. And so I'm going to click on this sync button here and it's going to go ahead and and uh, click resync and it'll sync to the actual filaments that I have here on my printer. Um, so that in fact is bamboo PLA mat. All right, now that that's all set, I'm gonna go ahead and slice plate. You can see here, this is going to be total 58 minutes and print and send. And there we go, successfully sent and we'll check on that in a minute. Okay, now that I have the bamboo printing, I'm gonna bring back the other models I want to send. So this time I can untoggle the base and I'll go ahead and send the spur gear next and I'll send this to the Prusa Mark IV. So let me untoggle the rack, right click, save as mesh. And this time I'm gonna change it from bamboo here to Prusa Slicer. So I'm gonna click on that little folder, select from my computer. And I created a folder here called Slicers that just allows me to go back and forth between the two really quick. So here I'm going to click my Prusa Slicer, click Open, and you'll see this update to Prusa Slicer, and then I'll click OK. I really do wish Fusion would include at least two other options here, or just total of two options at least for Slicer, so I can just go back and forth. But, you know, this, this works. All right, I'll click OK, and this will fire up my Prusa Slicer and throw my gear here. And here I'm going to change this from my Mini to my Mark IV. You can hear my bamboo in the background firing up. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and center that. I'm gonna go with the default 0.2 millimeter layer height here and click Slice. All right, let's take a look at that simulation. Everything looks good. We're looking at 28 minutes and I'm gonna export the G-code. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Go back to Fusion and bring back the rack. So I'll untoggle spur gear, toggle rack, right click, save as mesh, click OK. It goes to my Prusa slicer. Now this is going to my Mini, so I'm going to go ahead and change the printer over here from my Mark IV to my Mini. And let's select my object here. I'm going to click Place on Face, click on that bottom surface to reorient it, click the part, and click Center or Arrange object outside. Okay, we'll move it in and then click arrange. Uh, that's weird. I wonder why is this arrange not working. Arrange ignored the following objects which can't fit. Uh, I don't know why it's telling me I can't fit. I've never had an issue with this before actually. Um, but it looks like it fits fine. I don't see anything else on here. You could hear my bamboo. One thing I gotta say is the Prusa printers are much quieter than the bamboo, but I, I love all my printers. All right, back to this guy. I don't know. Arrange ignored the following objects which can't fit into single bed. That error is not making any sense to me. Like I said, I don't ever recall ever getting that, but we're just gonna manually place it on the center, slice, it slides fine. If anyone knows what the issue is with the error, let me know. All right, simulation here looks pretty good to me. I'm going to send it as is. I'm not going to fuss too much about it. Export. Now I've got all my files ready to print. Okay, I'm about 25 minutes into the print here on the bamboo. 32 minutes left. And let's take a look at what's going on. So I can see. Okay, it was so loud in the printer that it was just too hard to hear me. So I'm gonna come in with a voiceover here. Basically, you see the two parts. So it finished the pin and it moved down to the base. But the one thing that has me concerned here is if you look on the uh, left portion here, it's starting to uh, split from the bed a little bit. You can see it rising up. In here, the slicer actually recommended that I use brim for this part, and I chose to override it. Thought it would be fine. 
um, and I'm regretting that decision right now. So I end up just canceling this print and then resending with the part by itself uh, with a brim enabled. Since I went with the print sequential option, I don't end up losing the pin since it's already finished printing that part. I've got the rack printing on the mini and the first layer is looking excellent. And moving on to the Mark IV, I've got the spur gear. And here I'm running the Mark IV with input shaping enabled. So you can see here how that looks. All right, got my parts here ready to build. So let's go ahead and take off the rack here. Nice little flip there. Um, okay, so this looks pretty good here. Set that aside. And I already removed the spur gear and the pin. Here I have the base here. And you can see, let me take this out first. You can see here um, the concern I had with the hole. Um, it's fine up until you get to like the right tip, pretty top there. And so we'll clean that up a bit. Uh, the brim here comes off nicely. And for that hole, I'm actually gonna use a deburring tool here. And maybe just go over it. And just to clean that up a bit. It's a really great tool to have. Maybe right here as well. All right, so the pin should fit there nicely. Okay, yeah, it's a nice fit, not coming off. Okay, so that works well. Let's try the rack. I want this to be able to slide in and out there. It slides nicely. So I think we're ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and, um, let's see, I think I want to put the gear first. And then I'll put the pin in. Should be able to just. Oh, this is a little tight here. Hold on. Uh oh. Ah, crap. Uh, <laughs> back to the drawing board. Um. Did I forget to do an offset between the gear and the pin there? Um, looks like I don't have a clearance. Should have tested that first, now that's really in there. All right, I'm gonna have to uh, get this out and it looks like I'm gonna have to reprint the pin with a clearance there. Um, it's gonna be faster to print the pin than the gear, so. Uh, all right, <laughs> thought I could do this in one shot. Okay, back to Fusion here. Just wanted to check if I indeed forgot to put that clearance in. So let's take a look. If I click here on the edge of the pin here, I get the diameter showing that's 12.7. And if I click on the edge of the gear, I can see that that's 12.7. So there lies my problem. Um, all right, so here what I'll do is I'll go back to that pin component here, which is within the base component. So let me toggle that on and toggle the visibility of the others. I'm going to bring just the pin into view here. And what I need to do here is go to modify, press, pull. I'm going to take this and let's go ahead and give this an offset of, uh, let's say, negative 0.5 three millimeters and click OK. All right, and I'm just gonna resend this and we'll try it again. All right, printed a new pin here. Um, you can see the old one here, I broke that off. Got two pieces. Um, all right, so let's try this now. Before I put it in, let me see if it actually fits in the gear here. And that's a much better fit. So that's a 0.3 millimeter clearance there. Okay, so now I should be able to Put the gear, align it with the base, and snap this in, and this moves nice. And I should be able to put the rack in. And if I just go ahead and get to see, look at that. Okay, so you can see it a little better. That works 
nicely, just like Fusion said it would. All right, well, there's always that one, uh, I feel like that one clearance that you forget to set. So it's, it's, it's rare that you can get it all in the first try, but um, overall, I'm gonna call this project a success. One of the things I wanna point out before I wrap this up is just the clearances here between the parts and the differences in each one. Um, so let me just pull this apart really quick. Uh, let's, let's take a look at that. So with, with the pin, I used a 0.1 millimeter clearance, right? And you can see that snaps in and I could move that. That's not coming out. It gives me a good friction fit, you know. Now there are a little bit of, you know, it's, it's not perfect because of the, the way the circle here was printed or that hole being uh, vertically versus line horizontal. So a horizontal would give you a more accurate representation of that clearance, but it still works out. Like this is still, the job is done. I put that and that's not coming out. Now with the rack here, I went with a 0.2 millimeter clearance. And this is why I brought this wall back and this wall here back, um, or let me, these two walls here back, uh, 0.2 millimeters, right? So in total, it ends up being a 0.4 millimeter clearance. And you can see how that slides back and forth um, really nicely. And then the last clearance I used was between the hole and the pin here. And this, I used a 0.3 millimeter clearance. Now it's a little bit different comparing, you know, circles to uh, sort of rectangles where you have to extrude two walls. But again, you can see how that 0.3 millimeter clearance fits and how, it not, you know, if I had used a 0.1 on this, I wouldn't have gotten this nice spin here. Um, so it, it, this comes with a bit of just, uh, you know, testing for your printer and just experience where you would kind of say, okay, I think this is going to need 0.1 versus 0.2 or 0.3. But in the end, it, I didn't really even plan it that way, but it, we got sort of a nice um, representation of, uh, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 millimeter clearances here. So, okay, just wanted to point that out. Um, all right, that wraps it up for this project. Hope you enjoyed this. If you've uh, enjoyed following along, let me know in the comments below. If you missed a few in the series, uh, go back and check those videos. I think there's quite a bit of uh, gold nuggets that I threw in here for you. Um, and uh, any questions, leave it below. And make sure to check the resources I have below. I've got online courses and a link to my free Fusion 360 Constraints PDF. And if you just enjoyed the series and you want to contribute to the channel and more videos like this, consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. All right, guys, I will see you in the next project.